guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to learn how to make these beautiful shorts stroke pants the approach is the same for shorts and pants and you have seen me making these granny square pants but uh, for the other version i did um sunburst granny squares mixed up with the normal granny squares so i'm going to teach you the approach that i use because it's the same exact as um, the one in the photo right now and as well as the thumbnail so today we are going to make shorts that are inspired by our previous uh, granny square skirt as well as top if you haven't yet checked out those tutorials they're already up on the channel and i'll be leaving all the links um to their tutorials in the description box below today we're going to learn how to make this very easy pair of shorts i didn't have time to go through the whole process of the pants but i will explain to the t and you'll be able to make your own pants in case that's what you want to make so let's get started so for this project we are going to first work the skirt version the skirt part of the shorts then we shall go ahead and split the leg holes and create that very beautiful shirt or pant design so let's jump into the video already and the materials that you'll need for this project are yarn for the yarn i'm using a fingering weight yarn um this is seagull fingering weight yarn and I'm using three colors so I'm using white um, this nude-ish color and the brown color the hook that I'm using for this project is a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and then a dunning needle and a pair of scissors and you also need your measuring tape so the first thing that you're going to do is to take your hip measurement and the hip measurement that I'm going to be considering for this tutorial is 40 inches so take your hip measurement, the circumference of your hip, and note it down. And you're going to divide that number by 8, because I want a total of uh, 8 granny squares all the way around. As you can see, we have 4 on this side, and 4 at the back as well. So get your hip circumference and divide that number by 8. And whatever number you get, note it down. So, um... For me, I'll consider a, tot uh, a hip circumference of 40 inches and uh, 40 divided by 8 is 5. So we're going to start working our granny square. We're going to start off with our very first color. So I'm going to start off with uh, a magic ring. this and I'm going to make a chain of three after a chain of three this chain of three counts as a double crochet so you're going to go into the same magic ring with two more double crochets and then you're going to make a chain of two and then three double crochets into the same magic ring All right, so chain two, three double crochets into the magic ring. Chain two and three double crochets into the magic ring. This will be our last group of double crochets and you should be having a total of four groups, one, two, three, and four groups of three double crochets. At this point, you can close off the magic ring like that and then you're going to make a chain of two and slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round so just make a slip stitch this marks the end of round one let's go on to round two you're going to slip stitch into each of the next two double crochets and then slip stitch into the chain two space this will bring us to the chain two space here so you're going to make a chain of three and then place two more double crochets 
into the chain two space and then chain two and three more double crochets. So that counts as a shell. A shell is three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. After this, you're going to chain one, go into the next chain two space with a shell. So three double crochets, chain two and three more double crochets. Chain one, go into the next chain two space with a shell. Like that. Chain one, go into the next chain two space with a shell. All right, so once you have your very last shell, you're going to chain one and slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round into the topmost chain of the chain three at the beginning of the round and make a slip stitch. After this, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So you're going to have two rounds of the very first color. Let's go on to the next color, which is the nude color. Alright, so get whatever color that you've chosen to use for your project and you're going to make a slip knot. So we're going to attach this slip knot onto the chain one space right before the chain that we left behind, that strand that we left behind after cutting um, our last color, our previous color. So just go into the chain one space and attach your yarn. And then make a chain of three and into that same space you're going to place two more double crochets and that will count as three double crochets since the chain three counts as a double crochet and then chain one this is a corner and every corner gets a shell and a shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets <coughs> All right, so this is what you should have. Chain one, each chain one space gets only three double crochets. So um, you're going to have to note that. And then chain one, each chain two space is always located at the corner and it always gets a shell. All right, so chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, shell into the next corner, okay, so chain one, Three double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, one shell into the corner or the chain two space. Like that. Chain one, slip stitch into the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round. After this, you're going to chain one, cut your yarn. This is what you should have. You should have a perfect square at this point. Now we're going to introduce our third color, which is the dark brown. And we're going to just repeat the same exact process as we did for round three, which is the nude color. So just attach your yarn into the chain one space right be before the strand that you left behind for your previous color. 
chain three, which counts as a double crochet. And then two double crochets into the same space to make a total of three double crochets. Sorry. So now we have three double crochets there, chain one. Each chain one space gets three double crochets. So note that. And after this, you're going to make a chain of one. This is a corner, it gets a shell. After this, you're going to make a chain of one, three double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, a shell into the chain two space. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, a shell into the chain two space. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, <coughs> and place a shell into the very last chain two space of the round. So three double crochets, chain two and three more double crochets into the same chain two space. All right, after this, you're going to chain one and slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round. And then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So feel free to use whatever color of your choice. So now I'm going to attach my next color, which will be white. So you're going to keep growing your granny square until uh, the length of one side of the square or each side of the square is the figure that you got after dividing by eight. So for me, I got a total of five inches and uh, I'm going to make sure that I keep working until one side of the square measures five inches when slightly stretched. So as you can see here, we are not yet at five inches. That's why I'm continuing to grow my granny square. So we are currently at four inches. So I want a total of five inches. That's when I'll stop expanding my granny square. All right, so I can take a measurement right now and I see if I've gotten to five inches. Yes, when slightly stretched, I get to five inches. So that means I'm going to work my granny square until the white color or until round one, two, three, four, until I have a total of five rounds. So the fact that one side of the square 
is uh, the measurement that you need. That means all sides because um, it's a square and all sides are equal. So each side of the square should measure uh, the measurement that you got after dividing because we are working with a square and all sides should be equal. And don't forget while slightly stretched because we want a body hugging garment, something well fitted. So don't forget to give it a good stretch. Not very much, but something comfortable. So when you, get, when you get done with your last round, doesn't matter how many rounds that you make because we all have different tension, dif different stitching. So just follow the instructions. If you need to add more rows or rounds, please go ahead and do that. So if I measure here, it's about 4.25 when it's not stretched. And when I stretch it slightly, it goes to five inches. And remember, this skirt is going to be like on the body and it's going to be stretching outwards because of the hips and all that. So uh, put that into consideration. So once you get this measurement, once you know exactly what you're working with, you're going to do many more granny squares that are up to the second last color. And we're going to start attaching one onto the other to make a complete skirt. So let's do that. You're going to get your second granny square. Make sure all these granny squares are until the second last color of your granny square. So if you needed, let me say, a total of nine rounds for yours. For me, I did a total of one, two, three, four, and five rounds for the granny square to get the size that I wanted. But of course, when uh, you're a bigger size than me, you may consider about seven rounds. So that means you're going to interchange the colors until you get the size that you want for your, for your measurement. Now, whatever colors that you choose to use, make sure for these granny squares, you stop on the second last round or the second last color of the complete granny square. All these ones are incomplete and this is the only complete one. So let's go ahead and start attaching our next granny squares. So I'm attaching my yarn into the chain before the, the strand that we left behind for our previous color. So you're going to make a chain of three, three double crochets. So we're working the same exact way as we did for the granny square, the only difference is now we're going to start attaching these granny squares onto what we already have. So it's chain one, three double crochets. And when you get to the corner, you're going to place a shell. Now I think I'm going to place my, um, I'm going to attach my granny square onto this side. So instead of placing a shell, I'm going to place three double crochets chain one, attach into one of the corners of the complete granny square, like that, chain one more, and then three double crochets into the same chain two space to complete the corner of this granny square. And after that, you're going to chain one, remove your hook, leave this loop behind. I, I hope you can see it, that loop. Insert your hook into the next chain one space, pull through the loop, and then three double crochets onto the incomplete granny square into the next chain one space. So this is what we are having. So you can see we are attaching chain one, go into the next chain one space on the complete one, pull through the loop, and then three double crochets into the next chain one space of the incomplete granny square. So while we work this granny square to complete it, we are attaching 
this square onto this square. So if you prefer to use any other method, please go ahead and use it. You can use your darning needle. You can make these granny squares and finish them completely. And then you attach them using uh, a darning needle or a single crochet stitch. That's also valid. That's okay. But I prefer to join as I go. So chain one, remove your hook, attach into the next space on this side. And then now we are in the corner. So we are going to place three double crochets. Chain one, remove your hook, go into this corner, attach, and then chain one more because this is a corner and it had to get a total of two, two, two chains in between the three double crochets. So we place one before we attach and one after we attach. And then after that, you're going to place three double crochets into the same chain to space. So once you're done with this, you can see what we have right now. We're going to just go ahead and uh, complete our round as usual. Chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. Now this brings us back to what we were doing before we started attaching. So for, just go back to what you did for the previous rounds and complete your round. So we are placing our very last shell in the last corner. And after that, you're going to make a chain of one and slip stitch on top of the chain three of the first, uh, chain three of the round. So after your slip stitch, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So this is what you should have. So based on my measurements, I need a total of eight granny squares all the way around. I don't want a very tight fitting and I don't want a very loose one. So let me just remove this. I continued to join my granny squares until I had a total of seven granny squares in a line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So once I fold over my work like this, I am now going to start attaching my eighth granny square and this one is a little bit different from the other ones because it's going to attach on two sides of the granny square. So it's going to attach onto this granny square and as well as this in order to form a round. So uh, I've already started the white color on the incomplete granny square. Now I'm going to start attaching onto this corner. I hope you still remember how to attach. Chain one, attach onto the other side. And continue to do that on this whole side. So now that we've finished attaching onto this side, we're now going to start at, um, working on this second, on the third side of the granny square because this is the first one and this is the second one. Now we are going to ac work across the third side of the granny square, not attaching to anything.
All right, now we are on the next corner and this corner is going to start attaching onto this side so that we form a round. So chain one and attach onto the granny square on the other side. So we are attaching our very last corner here, chain one, three more double crochets into the chain two space, chain one and slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round. And then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So this will form a round as you can see here. If I can zoom out a bit, Okay, so I hope this is clearer now. Now we're going to start attaching these other granny squares right below the granny squares that we already have. So um, let me say you have this granny square and it's going to just go below. You're going to get your yarn. Like this and then you're going to just locate one granny square that you're going to attach to. So you're going to start your first side as usual. Chain three. Two more double crochets into the same chain one space. And then chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. And now we've reached the corner that we want to attach onto this side. So chain one, three double crochets into the chain two space. And then chain one and go into the corner here. Just get the corner like that. Chain one more and three more double crochets into the chain two space so that will complete this corner on this side and we are going to start attaching so chain one attach onto this side where you intended to attach this granny square chain one attach and then three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one attach and then three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, attach, and this is a corner, so we get three double crochets. Chain one, and then attach into the corner here. In between the two granny squares, chain one more. And then three more double crochets into the chain two space. Then from here, you are going to just complete your granny square as usual. So you're going to have something that looks like this. It has attached onto what we already have, but now we're going to just complete the granny square.
So we are coming to the end of this round. You're going to chain one and slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round. Chain one and cut your yarn. So this is what you'll have. You can see we've started the second layer of granny squares. So you're going to get your next piece. And this time it's going to be quite different. The difference is this time we're going to attach two sides of this granny square onto what we already have. So we're going to start off our granny square as usual. Attach into the chain one space before before the loose strand from the previous color and then work the first side chain three two more double crochets into the same chain one space chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one chain one and into the corner we are placing two dou three double crochets sorry and we are not finishing the corner so you're going to chain one so depending on the hand that you use I'm right handed so I'm going to join this first and then this last alternatively I can first join actually yeah I'm going to first join this this side and then join the second side so just like we did before Nothing really changes, but I had to demonstrate this just in case someone may be confused about what to do when they are in such a situation. So you're going to attach as usual, but this time we are attaching two sides of the incomplete granny square onto what we already have. Alright, so now we are at the corner and I'm going to chain one, attach into the middle of the granny squares, chain one more, and then place three more double crochets into the same chain two space to complete the corner on the incomplete granny square. So this is what you'll have. And you can see everything falling into place. So after this, you're going to chain one attach onto the second side now we are on the second side the first side is done we are now attaching onto the second side so as i said for the top um you can join these granny squares any way that's easy for you. If you find the join as you go method a bit hard for you, then you can use the single crochet stitch or the slip stitch method, whatever is simple for you. So we are at the corner here and I'm attaching in the middle of the two granny squares, chain one more and three more double crochets into the chain two space. And look what we have right now. I hope this makes sense now. Um, we are joining two sides of the granny square onto the what we already had. And this applies to the second granny square all the way to the second last granny square. Now the very last granny square, that is also something different because we shall be joining three sides of the incomplete granny square onto what we already have. So let me go ahead and keep attaching different granny squares and I'll show you what to do for the very final granny square that completes the second layer of granny squares for our skirt.
Okay guys, here we are. We have only one granny square left to be fitted into this space. And I've gotten my granny square and worked the very first side. So the first corner is going to go to this side. If you're left-handed, you're going to come from this side to this side. So you're going to join as usual. Nothing really changes. I just had to demonstrate this because this is quite different from um, all the other granny squares that we've been attaching onto the the skirt. So we are approaching our very first corner, chain one, attach in between the granny squares, chain one more, and three more granny, sorry, three more double crochets into the chain to space. Then continue to attach to this side as well. Alright guys, after getting the layers of the granny squares that you need for your skirt, then we're going to start working on the waistband. And for the waistband, I'm going to use two strands of white in order to get something a little bit stronger than what we have for the granny squares. So you're going to get your two strands and make a slip knot. And you're going to attach your yarn in any chain one space. So I'm going to attach it here in one of the chain one spaces on this side. And then you're going to make a chain of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to determine the thickness of your waistband. So if you want it thicker, go ahead and make more chains. So you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and make a single crochet and continue to single crochet into each and every chain all the way down. So you're going to end up with a total of six or whatever number that you started with on the chain less by one. So since I had seven chains, I'm having a total of six single crochets. After this, you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So you're going to skip one stitch and slip stitch into the next. And then slip stitch into the next stitch and turn your work. And now you're going to make one single crochet into the back loop only. Into each and every stitch. One single crochet, back loop only. All right, so you should be having the same number of single crochets, just like the previous row. So after this, you're going to chain one, turn your work, single crochet, back loop only into each and every stitch. So since I had six stitches for my row one, I should maintain that total of six single crochets. But this time I'm just working in, in the back loop of each and every stitch. So when you get here, we are counting the chain one space as one of the stitches. So skip the chain one space and slip stitch into the next stitch. 
and then slip stitch into the next. Make sure you evenly distribute these stitches. Alternatively, you can just consider the spaces between the stitches. I think that's even a more comfortable count. All right, guys, um, I've made it all the way around and you can see how the waist, the waistband has been cinched in. So the fact that we used a single crochet back loop only create the ribbing effect and it also creates a stretchy, a kind of stretchy waistband. So when you make it all the way around, you are now going to just slip stitch to close up the waistband. Just fold over to the wrong side so that you're stitching everything together on the wrong side. And you're going to go into each and every stitch with one slip stitch. So I'm getting one loop on this side and the other loop on the other side. And I'm making one slip stitch. This is my last one, like that, and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. All right, look at what we have, guys. This is the same line of the waistband, and this is exactly what we have. Look how pretty this is. If you feel like this is still very big for your waist, you're going to have to do a drawstring, but I don't think I need that. Or you can also opt for uh, a stretchy, an elastic band, and then you work a single crochet row while um, inserting an elastic band all the way around so that you have it stretchy. All right, guys, the skirt level ended on the second layer of the granny squares. Now, the third layer is going to be attached in a different way, in a way that we are going to split four granny squares onto one side and four granny squares onto the other side. As you can see, we have two layers. So we have one, two, three, and four granny squares on this side, and then one, two, three, and four granny squares on this side. Now there's something missing here and we are going to be attaching our next granny square into that space. So you're going to grab your next granny square, which is this one. And we're going to turn this uh, skirt into shorts at this point, just by placing uh, this granny square here and the granny square, another granny square on this side. So we're going to attach as usual into the chain one space before the loose strand of the previous color. Chain three, just work this side as we've been working for the previous granny squares. Chain one, three double crochets. Chain one, three double crochets, chain one, and then this is a corner. So we are going to place three double crochets and chain one, and we are going to attach along this side 
of the first layer on this side. So this is what we have. The waistband has been worked and now we are working the downer part of the pants. So you're going to attach into this corner and work along this side just like we've been attaching all the other granny squares. So we are at the corner and we are placing, we are attaching that corner into the corner on this side as well, the upper side, the upper layer where you're working your granny square. So from here, you are going to just work this side. As usual, we are not going to attach anything onto it. So chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. So at this point you should notice that we are first working on one side of the shirt or one leg hole and then we shall go on to the other side later on. So when it comes to this corner, we are not yet done with it. We've just placed three double crochets and then you're going to chain one and we are going to attach onto this corner here because we are first working, attaching onto this layer and this layer. We are first working on this side of the leg hole. So chain one and attach onto this side. So just make sure you're working on one side first. And on this side, we are going to start attaching along the side of the granny square. So after your three double crochets, you're going to chain one and we're going to attach onto this side. And I'll show you what that will look like. Make sure you don't switch sides. We are working on one side first and then we shall go to the opposite side later on. All right, so now we are at the corner and you're placing chain one, attach into the corner on this side, chain one more, and three more double crochets into the same chain two space. Now from here, you're going to chain one and attach on top of the first stitch of the round, and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So this is what you should have right now. If you don't have this, that means you made a mistake somewhere. We have this granny square that's placed onto this side, as you can see. It's split into half. And now we're going to work the same exact thing for this granny square, this one. We're going to attach it the same exact way onto this side and this side, but this time we're also attaching onto this side. So this final granny square is going to attach three sides. This one, this one, and this one. So what you're going to do is work your very first side that's not going to attach to anything. I hope you know that side. 
and then we are going to start attaching onto this very first side which is this one because I'm right-handed I'm going to go all the way from here and then attach onto this granny square and then attach onto the very last granny square so let's begin you're going to attach your yarn here just watch what I'm doing the joining is still the same the difference is where to join So we've reached the very first corner and we are attaching into the corner there chain one more and then three more double crochets into the same chain two space one two and three and the moment you're done with this now we are going to start attaching so as i was saying <clears throat> the next part where we're going to attach is onto this granny square that we just placed in the middle of the very first leg hole so along that side this side here so just grab your yarn and start attaching onto it like that So this is going to create the crotch of the shirt. This is the exact middle part of the shirt, the middle parting of the shirt. That's the side that we are attaching right now. And everything will make sense later on. But right now, it's still a mess. And the fact that we are using uh, so many colors, it's kind of confusing to understand what's going on. But I hope I'm explaining it right or clearly for you guys to understand. So after this, uh, we are at the corner, we are chaining one and attaching into the corner on this side. Chain one more. And place three more double crochets into the same chain two space. So we are done with the second side and let's see what we have, the results that we have from there. I hope you can see what's happening. So now the only side that we are left to join uh, is this one. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that real quick. And then you can see the shirt's already turning out beautifully well and the parting is already created. So I hope this makes a lot of sense to you guys. So let me just continue to join this very last side. So I'm on my very last corner and I'm placing three double crochets, chain one, attach into the corner on the opposite side, chain one more, and three more double crochets. And after this, I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into the very first stitch of the round, chain one and cut my yarn. Guys, look what we have. We've turned our skirt into a shirt. This has been a challenge for many of you guys. Uh, uh, the, the bigger granny squares, I did something totally different. I think I'll do a detailed video on it because that one is quite different from, from this one. So uh, this is exactly what we have. 
Now, the next thing that you're going to do is to just go ahead and you see the granny square that we have attached. Uh, on the upper side of the shirt, we have one, two, three, and four granny squares on each side because this is the middle pattern. But when it comes to the leg holes, we are going to have a total of five granny squares because we've introduced one extra one in the middle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and this is the one because we've counted one, yet it was half. It's split into half. So the next thing that you're going to do is to do as many granny squares as you wish and just place them right below the granny square on the leg hole. Just place, just like we did for the skirt, we're going to continue to place a granny square under each and every granny square all the way around until you get the length of the pants that you want. But I'm going to stop at the shorts level and uh, I think we should make an edging for our shorts. So grab your yarn. I'm going to be using a double strand for my uh, edging so that it's as firm as the waistband. So just grab your yarn, make a slip knot, and attach into any chain one space. And just like we did for the skirt, by the way, if you haven't yet checked out the skirt tutorial, I already have a tutorial on it. So you're going to make a chain of three, three more double crochets into the chain one space, and then one single crochet into the next chain one space, one single crochet into the next chain one space, chain three, and then make a total of three double crochets into the same chain one space, one single crochet into each of the next two chain one spaces. So two single crochets, chain three, and then place three double crochets into uh, the same chain one space and repeat that all the way around. One and two. So this is going to create scallops at the base of our shorts, just like we did for the skirt. And I'm going to go ahead and work all the way around and I'll meet you back at this point at the beginning of the round. Okay guys, uh, I've made it all the way around the first leg hole and I've placed a single crochet into the very last chain one space. I'll go into the chain one space where the chain three comes from and place a slip stitch and chain one. Cut my yarn and this is what we have. You can see the beautiful edge that it has created for our shirt at the base. And now all that's left is to work on the second leg hole. I'm going to work on it off camera and I'll share with you the final photos of everything. But just go ahead and repeat the same exact process for this second leg hole and we shall see the final images of um, our product. And the other thing that you'll do is to just weave in all your ends, just turn your work to the wrong side. You're going to have to sit through this for some time and weave in each and every end in order to have a very good final photo. So um, 
that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and i will see you in my next video bye